The practice of yoga inspires us in so many ways. And from its beginning, the teachings of yoga are that we go forward. There's no quitting. You always put your best foot forward. Sometimes we have to do bypasses because our bodies, our mind, need some alternatives. In this practice, let's work on those bypasses and putting our best foot forward in the practice. We'll begin standing. As you begin the practice in Tadasana, this mountain pose, spread your toes from the foundation of your pose, from the spread of the toes, draw in, you get this nice muscular engagement. When you're all in, in a practice, you engage fully, you align beautifully, you are in action. Even from the earliest teachings in yoga, from the Bhagavad Gita, where a great warrior, Arjuna, is so hesitant to be in action because he might be at war with his family. The obvious destruction in front of him causes such apprehension that he is not in action. Even in this very static pose, Tadasana, the actions are very dynamic. The toes are spread. You're engaging the legs. You're spreading the fingers. Take the heads of the arm bones back so you open the upper chest really nicely to begin your practice. As you come to the top of the mat, do that same engagement from your foundation. Draw from the toes all the way to the hips. Draw from the fingers all the way to the heart. As you root down from the pelvis to the earth, get nice extension from the pelvis to the crown of the head and out through the fingertips. Exhale, release your hands. Some of these actions, you may feel like you need that bypass. You need to find other ways for your body to go into these movements. You're all in. Inhale, reach your arms up with that full engagement. Exhale, draw down in a forward fold and place your hands right alongside your ankles to take your right foot back. Take your right knee down to the earth and balance yourself as you come up. So you have a 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle here. Once again, for some of us, the pressure on the knee might be too much, so always have a blanket or some, some padding for the back knee should you want that. Inhale, take your arms up, spread your fingers, and as you get this nice rooted quality from the pelvis to the earth, you get a nice extension from the pelvis to the crown of the head and out through the fingertips. Release your hands to the mat. Step your back foot forward. Place both hands to the low back and rise up. Pause again in Tadasana. In the West, we have interval training where we rest between poses. In yoga, you're always fully engaged in the practice. So as you keep a nice engagement and tone in both the legs and the arms, with your eyes bright, reach your arms up and slightly back. Exhale, place your hands alongside your ankles and step your left leg back. Take your left knee down, take your hands right above your knee. And once again, just pause. You're engaged, you're fully in the practice, bringing your awareness to each action. Inhale, take your arms up again, Spread your fingers, take your gaze up, take your hands back, open the heart nicely. Exhale, release your hands, step your back foot forward, place both hands to your low back and rise up. Inhale, reach your arms up, 
Good. Exhale. Just bow to honor your practice. Honor this engagement. Step your legs back to come to a plank position. Now your plank position can be in straight legs or you can have the knees down and lift your feet up. Whichever works for you today. Exhale. Lower yourself down to the mat. Inhale. Take your heart forward. Exhale, come back through all fours position to downward facing dog. Walk your feet up to your hands. Place your hands to your low back and rise up. When we went from a plank position to the knees, that's a bypass. You're still engaged fully. You're customizing the practice for you. So continue that to make the actions of the practice work for your body. Inhale, reach your arms up, reach your gaze up. Exhale, take your hands down to the mat. Let's do that again. Come to a plank position. And you find out which works for you. Can you hold the plank with straight legs or should you take your knees down? Lower yourself to the mat. This time on the in-breath, draw your heart forward in a baby cobra pose where your elbows are bent. Now see about getting strength in the back muscles by reaching your hands straight back. Spread your fingers. You've got that full engagement. You're all in in the practice. Exhale, soften down. Take your arms to the side, spread your wings, inhale, rise up. And on this next move, for some of us, we might need a little bypass. An alternative might be nice for some of us. If you take your hands forward, can you still lift up? If you can't lift up, just reach your hands back. Release your hands to the mat. Come to downward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Allow a nice ease to your breath. A softness to the facial muscles. As we pause between poses, can you be all in? Or can you make some modifications? A modification might be child's pose, puppy dog pose. Something that works for you. You're still fully engaged and in action in the practice, but you're customizing the practice. So it's just right for you. Walk your hands now back to your feet. Bend your knees to place your hands right above your knees. With your hands right above the knees, look at the knees and see if you can take them back just slightly. So that maybe the knees better align right over the ankles and forward of the toes. Keeping that engagement, the strong engagement of the legs, reach your arms up. So you've got a strong muscular action going on. You're aligning yourself so the ears and the upper arms align nicely. You draw yourself into a deeper engagement in the pose through fullness in your breath, root down to rise up out of the pose, reach up and back, exhale, release your hands down. Come to the front of the mat. In the yoga practice, we give our best. And sometimes our best are some of these bypasses, some of these variations that we work out that work just perfect for us You've done these poses enough that you know what kind of variations will work for you. Let's do another sun salute. As you stand at the top of the mat, engage very fully. You are all in in the practice. Even though this seems so static, you feel this full engagement. Inhale, reach your arms up and back. Exhale, take your hands down to the earth. Step yourself to a plank position again. In your plank position, 
come to your right side and as you come to the right side in the side plank position once again just figure out what would work for you maybe placing your foot in front or behind you so that you can hold the pose and get more fullness come to your variation of the pose that allows you to express fully, to show that you're all in in the practice, you're giving it your all. Release yourself back to a plank position and lower yourself down to the mat. On the in-breath, once again, reach your hands straight back to work the back muscles nicely. Exhale, soften. Inhale, spread your wings, maybe alongside exhale it's not for everybody but if you can reach your hands forward and still lift up do so if not find the alternative release your hands down to the mat come to all fours position downward facing dog in downward facing dog maybe you've heard this is a resting pose in some classes and to me This is not a resting pose. You are fully engaged. You are all in. Your arms and your legs are fully engaged in the pose. You allow your neck to relax from the foundation of the hands and your feet. Your limbs are fully engaged. Your limbs are fully in action. Walk your hands back to your feet again. Bend your knees again with your hands right above your knees. See if you can refine your alignment by drawing the knees back. Lift your arms up. Maybe you can draw just a little bit deeper in the pose without feeling like the belly draws into a hammock-like expression. Keep the lower ribs drawing back. A nice full engagement in the legs and the mid thoracic area. Root down to rise up out of the pose. Release your hands down. Step to the front of the mat. Let's do the left side plank this time. Start in Tadasana. It's your home base of standing poses. Be fully engaged, all in, in the practice. Inhale, take your arms up and slightly back. Exhale, come to the earth with your hands alongside your ankles to step to a plank position. From plank position, draw to the left side. See if you can keep the pelvis lifted, not floating down. Know that the action of the legs express this full engagement. Again, you can take one foot in front or keep the legs stacked. Just come to the variation that works for you in Vasistasana. Reach over. Release down. Come to a plank position again. Lower yourself to the mat. Reach your hands straight back. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, soften. Take the hands wide. Inhale, rise up, spreading your wings. Exhale, soften. Again, find the alternative that works for you to strengthen your back muscles as you rise up. Exhale, release your hands. Come do all fours position. Downward facing dog again. Look at your hands. See if you can get even more engagement from the foundation of your hands with a nice spreading of the fingers, a clawing at the fingertips. Look at your feet. They should be hip distance apart to engage the legs fully. Maybe a slight bend to the knees to lift your sit bones higher. Keep your armpits lifted, your head released toward the earth. Now come towards straight legs. 
as you allow this nice lengthening quality from your heart to your pelvis and now down through the heels. Walk your hands back to your feet. Take your hands right above your knees. Lift your arms up, keeping the alignment tips that we were working on, keeping this nice full engagement of the arms and the legs. Root down to rise up. Release your hands and step to a nice wide position. In this wide stance, place your hands right at the hips. Turn your right toes out. Yoga offers lots of variations. So again, rather than quitting in the pose, we modify to make it right for our body. There is no do-overs. You just go through the practice with these modifications. So one of the modifications you might do, or a bypass as we're calling it in this, is to take your hand the right hand to the tall block, just to the outside of your ankle. If your hand can't go all the way to the floor, you've got this nice way to keep the right side lifted, lift the left arm up, keep your back leg so strong as you reach your arm over your head. From the pelvis to the foot, you've got the strong engagement. And now from the pelvis out through the fingertips, you feel this nice length. From here, root down to lift yourself up. I'm gonna carry the block to the other side because I know that allows for more opening here. It's my bypass to this Utita Parsvakanasana that we're doing. Bend your knee, lift your arms up, take your hand down, Take your lifted arm, the right hand to your waist. You do your best. You always put your best foot forward. You keep this anchoring quality from the pelvis down to the foot for taking more fullness to the form of the pose by reaching your arm over your head. Allow your breath to be very full and bright. Root down to inhale and lift yourself up to come out of the pose. Let's apply that with some balance now. So turn your right toes out. You might want to have your block in the ready position again. Inhale, lift your arms up. Keep the back leg strong. As yogis, there's no resignation. We keep to the practice. We don't quit. We allow ourselves to go a little bit deeper into the practice, this time by balancing here. So step your block a little bit forward. Step your back foot a little forward. Lift the back leg up. Pause there. Sometimes we come out of balance. Sometimes we're ready to move on, but see if you can just pause and get as many refinements as possible, especially through the foundation of your foot and your hand. From there, can you expand more fully? Reach your arm up and over your head in a form very similar to what we did in Parsvakanasana. Now come back to the pose that you started with. So bend your knee, look back toward your back foot so that when it lands, you have a nice lineup, front heel to the back arch. From that same pose we were in, Utita Parsvakanasana, lift yourself all the way up. Exhale, release. In balance pose, you always feel like, oh gosh, can I do this? Balance poses are, can be very humbling. And as long as you know you're doing your best, you're giving it your all, one of the expressions that I love in yoga is 
swaha you know once you've given it your best things don't turn out perfectly do you have this great way of just like letting it go i did everything i could to refine the pose now it's just time to let that go so lift your arms up and if you're using a block take it to the outer ankle and release your hand down to the block with the lifted arm at your waist look at the floor step in balance yourself as you place your block very fully see if you can lift your back foot even higher this full engagement this practice is all about just being fully engaged giving it our all and sometimes we need those workarounds those bypasses to the full pose find what pose allows you to come to a nice full expression as you allow the breath to become full you stay in the pose release by taking your hand back to the waistline bend the knee look back at the back foot see if you can get it to land in a nice alignment with the front foot before lifting yourself up and out of the pose release your hands come to tadasana that standing pose mountain pose with your feet parallel to each other with a nice engagement from your foundation to the pelvis close your eyes for a moment this pause is not a rest this pause actually has you in a very engaged pose you are all in even though this appears so static you feel such engagement in the legs and the arms the practice continues even though you're in this place of stillness you refine constantly now with your eyes bright come toward a squat pose now for some of us going into a full squat just doesn't work for our bodies so again we need those workarounds we need uh, some different bypass solutions that works for us we're still doing the practice but honoring our body customizing these moves as you come down just brought, bring your pelvis down and for some of us this might be our squat we can use our hands to support us or use your arms to balance you some of you can come all the way down to the earth find out for you in this practice what would work best how can you customize your practice to make it work for you release your pelvis down to the mat and extend your feet forward so with your feet forward in dandasana similar to tadasana it's uh, the home base of seated poses and it looks very static but everything is very engaged the foundation is the pelvis and the back side of the legs are pressing back so you feel this nice engagement the kneecaps are lifting up toward the pelvis you can take your hands alongside your pelvis to get even more length from the pelvis all the way to the heads of the arm bones for some of us this may result in rounding you feel your spine kind of popping out so a little elevation i know for myself that is my bypass <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if in life we could find those many bypasses to things <laughs> that just aren't working for us like we can do in yoga and the bypass is to elevate your pelvis so that you can get more elongation in the spine no rounding even using your blocks either for elevation or for getting length to the side body 
So keep a nice engagement in the legs through the spread of your toes. Take the heads of the arm bones back. Bend your right knee and press your right foot so the right foot is parallel to the extended left leg. Now, some of you uh, really shouldn't be going very deep in your twist. You need to work your bypass, right? You're still doing the pose, but you're modifying in such a way that it works for your body. Some of you are such super twisters that you can take your foot a lot farther from your extended leg. But find out what works for you as you take your left hand to the outer right knee, come to a twist. Just invite a nice in-breath and out-breath in the twist. Maybe you can even get more length on this left side by reaching your left arm up. Breathe in to expand the left side ribs. And either take the hand back to the outer knee or take the elbow to the outer knee. Once again, you're just kind of working like what is the most effective way for you to be fully engaged in the practice. You're no quitter. You're not. There's no resignation. You just design the practice so that you can Stay fully engaged. Release out of the pose. Come back to Dandasana. With your legs forward, the toes very engaged and spread. You get just a little bit more curve as you stay in the pose a little bit more. You see if you can transform that lumbar curve to draw the ilium forward, the pelvis slightly forward. Bend your left knee, and one, once again, the placement of your foot is very critical, and one side is totally different than the other for many of us, so find out how you can customize this or what bypass you need to do to honor the actions of the twist as you take your hand to the outer knee. Get a nice lifting quality with the hand behind you. Lift your chin to open the throat. Now see about reaching your right arm up. So your bent leg stays very active. Your straight leg is very active. Come to a little bit deeper form of the twist as you open your heart. In the yoga practice, we're not throwing in the towel. There's no quitting. You always put your best foot forward. You stay engaged. It's all about the awareness that you can bring to your practice. You've done your best. You know you've done your best. You know you've given it your all. Maybe there are still refinements that you can work on. But for now, you can just let it go. Swaha. You come back to straightening your legs in dandasana get a nice elongation of the spine now let's do that same pose lying on your back so the same l-shaped form lying on your back if you've got a strap you might want to use that strap lie on your back in that l-shaped form maybe you can just hold the legs up there with a nice full engagement that you gave to Dandasana. So spread your toes, keep the heels lifting. And in this one, see if you can have the heels go just slightly higher than the toes if possible. Keep the strong engagement. If you'd like to use the strap, by all means, to keep a nice engagement of your lumbar spine, you can bend your knees slightly. That would be your bypass to this practice. Whichever works for you to keep this strong engagement, a nice rootedness. Draw your right leg down toward the mat. And just notice as you take the leg down, you notice how the abdominal muscles engage very nicely. 
inhale lift your right foot up for some of us we have to again bend the knees that would be our that would be our yoga bypass to the practice for others of us we we may not want to go down quite so far so just find out on the opposite leg as you take the left leg down can you go nice and slow but still keep this full engagement you still feel like the left leg is fully engaged and all in in this this practice lift your leg up now with both legs slowly take your legs down and take your legs down and again for many of us this may involve bending the knees slightly so that you honor the action in the low back. Keep on drawing the feet down toward the earth, either slightly bent legs or straight legs. Come toward the earth. And finally, on the earth. With your knees bent, and your feet on the mat, just draw your knees wide apart and press your feet in toward each other. We've had this practice where we focused on our engagement in the practice. You know, are we all in? Are we giving it our best? Once you feel like you've given it your best, you feel this surrender. So as you feel the support of the earth with your feet together and your knees wide apart, you allow the support of the spine to refine your actions. Maybe you can even take your feet just slightly closer to your pelvis to get a nice opening of the heart press your elbows down with your palms facing each other in this form almost like you have robot arms lift your pelvis up off the floor just get this nice fullness to the chest again release your pelvis down to the mat fold your knees in toward each other release your arms to your sides and just extend your legs out just like tadasana and dandasana shavasana appears to be a very static pose but as you come into the form of the pose you take attention to the alignment, to the placement of the arms and the legs. Even in this pose, you're all in. Or maybe you need a little bypass. Maybe you need to make some refinement, maybe a lift of your knees or take your feet to a chair. Some refinement so that you're customizing the pose for yourself. Close your eyes if you haven't already. Invite fullness to your chest and feel how the ribs move against the mat. You know you've given it your all in this practice. You've engaged fully. You've brought your awareness to the alignment. And now you can just let it go. You can surrender very fully to the earth. It's that time to assimilate the actions.
to bring greater awareness to your breath. When you notice your mind drifting slightly, maybe away from the breath, You show that you're engaged very fully into this restorative practice by bringing your attention back to your breath, back to this place of ease and contentment. And in your own time, bend both knees to plant your feet. Take your arms up and over your head. Draw to your right side, let your right arm be your pillow. Lift yourself up. Come to a seated pose that works nicely for you to end the practice. Close your eyes. You've given it your all. When you give your best, there's this feeling of ease, this swaha moment. You can just let it go. You feel so content. Place your hands right in front of your heart to honor this practice where you did give it your all, your focus, your dedication. We can apply these teachings both on the mat and off the mat during the day. And to these teachings, we bow. Namaste.